Now, because the big picture economic and national security issues work so well for the government, Labor, the other Green left opponents, much of the Canberra press gallery and even the Prime Minister's conservative critics, they all love the side issues, the personal attacks and the character assassination. That's their game. It has been for the best part of the past three years. They make it personal, they make it ugly, they keep it away from the core issues of government. So it's worth pointing out a couple of other speeches in Parliament last night. Former Attorney-General Christian Porter made his valedictory speech. A brilliant career brought to a premature end by a sickening, vengeful and deliberate episode of trial by media. An ideologically fuelled hit job of the lowest kind, driven by the ABC and Labor in a way that was completely at odds with the rule of law, standards of public debate, any sense of natural justice or media ethics. Porter will go on to other things, but his is a cautionary tale. The rule of law is the antidote to the rule of the mob. And then I experienced a mob. Uh, it's just people so utterly convinced in their own judgment that they didn't need anything else other than their own judgment. And people that would just cut through any law or abandon any process that might get between them and the target of their judgment. And that, in that experience, I, I saw the real truth about how critical the protection of the rule of law is and how fragile it is and how every man and woman in this country should fight for those protections as if their lives depend on it. Yeah, it's a real worry for all of us what happened to Christian Porter. So that's an important warning out of a political low point. Meanwhile, the journalist who pursued Porter, Louise Milligan from the ABC, she also relentlessly smeared the innocent Cardinal George Pell. Well, Milligan's still paid by you at the ABC. And she even has her personal defamation costs paid for by you. Go figure, hey? Anyway, a Liberal politician plunged into this ugly politics of vilification herself last night, directed at her own party. Conservative factional warrior Connie Fiervanti wells lost her spot on the New South Wales Senate ticket on the weekend in a ballot to Jim Molan, effectively ending her political career. Accordingly, there are a few matters I wish to place on the record before my departure. Many in this place would be aware of the history I have had with Scott Morrison. Let me give some clarity and context to that history so there can be no misunderstanding. In order to understand the man, it is best to look at his past actions. While professing to be a man of faith and claiming centre-right status, Morrison is a product of the left, having worked for Bruce Baird. He is adept at running with the foxes and hunting with the hounds, lacking the moral compass and having no conscience. His actions conflict with his portrayal as a man of faith. He has used his so-called faith as a marketing advantage. We learnt the leader of his Hillsong church group, Brian Houston, was a mentor to Morrison. Houston, Houston recently stood down as head of Hillsong because he was charged with sexual offences. Vicious, ugly, smearing by association. This was Twitter-level stuff from the senator, unbecoming of the parliament. Now, I've known Connie for a long while. I've broken bread with her in the past, and she is right to say that the factional shenanigans of the New South Wales Liberal Party are a disgrace. You've heard me say so on this program repeatedly and lately because there are still winnable seats for the federal election in New South Wales that don't have candidates, for crying out loud, because of all these factional games. Now, I don't pretend to know exactly who's at fault, except that all the factional players share some of the responsibility. And Senator Thea Varanti wells has always been one of them. These people seem more interested in their factional rivalries than good governance and giving voters a good choice. But Senator Thea Varanti wells last night just went for revenge, the vandalism of the vanquished. It is his way or the highway, an autocrat, a bully who has no moral compass. In my public life, I have met ruthless people. Morrison tops the list, followed closely by Hawke. Morrison is not fit to be Prime Minister. Well, no doubt uh, the Senator is a hero on Twitter tonight, but people who end up in Parliament with a major party owe everything to that party. Politics is a team caper. 
So when you lose, it's the poorest of form to try to wreck the joint on the way out, to destroy a team that gave you a career. And, of course, it's a gift to your party's rivals as well. The cold, hard fact is that the rant last night by Senator Connie fiavaranti wells just proved that the Liberal Party pre-selectors were right to choose Jim Molan instead of her.